so hello friends in this video lecture uh, we are going to discuss about the inertial elements so let's uh, start so agenda for today is that first we will discuss about the mass and moment of inertia which are mainly inertial properties related to your translation and rotational motion then uh, we will discuss about the translation and rotation kinetic energy and uh, we will also uh, do some basic derivations in order to come up with the uh, equation that was uh, used for the kinetic energy then uh, we will go through some basic examples and try to derive this uh, mass moment of inertia for the simple system and then in next video which will be a counterpart for this video in that uh, we will take us a little bit more complicated system in which the inertial properties will be varying with a function of any generalized coordinate system so let's start so first of all uh, if we think uh, talk about the inertial elements so what is the property of inertial element is that they store and release kinetic energy now if we look at the motion of any body then those motions can be broadly classified into two categories there are translation and rotation in previous video we have already discussed about the mathematical formulation of uh, behind the translation and the rotation uh, here oh, what we will do is that we will give you a basic brief idea like what we mean by translation what we mean by rotation so the translation motion is defined as the path followed by center of mass of the body at the same time the rotation motion is defined as the path traced by any point that can be located on the body or that point can be the uh, your cg of the body with respect to any other point located on the body or even outside the body so <clears throat> in this way uh, we can uh, broadly classify and define the translation and rotation now the question is uh, which are the inertial properties that are related to your translation and rotation and can be uh, mandatory while working with this type of behaviors so for translation what we have to do is that the inertial property that is required in order to define the translation of any body is mass while uh, for rotation it is a your moment of inertia now what is the difference main uh, difference between this def, uh, def requirement for translation and rotation the main difference is that in uh, translation mainly depends upon your total mass of the system if your mass is evenly distributed or unevenly distributed it's not going to affect your translation motion but at the same time if the mass uh, the mass distribution uh, affects the rotation of the motion so uh, let's move to the next slide in which uh, we will just uh, discuss about this why this uh, <coughs> inertial properties are required and uh, how it is related to your forces moments or even uh, energy of the system so uh, first let's take example of uh, your translation motion so in translation motion whenever a body is subjected to any type of force so there will be some motion that will be uh, set up in that system so that motion can be uh, computed mathematically by using the principle of linear momentum now uh, at the same time what we will do is that in order to compute how much the energy is stored by the system we can use the principle of conservation of uh, kinetic energy or conservation of energy principle so to understand this in a better way let's take a very basic example in which a block is moving with some velocity if we are going to apply a force on this block uh, let's call the force as of f so a force is applied in this direction i cap so what we will do is that this is my x and this is y so i am denoting the s cap direct x as a i cap direction and j cap so these are two unit vectors that are fixed to your inertial reference frame now the property that we have previously discussed about the inertial reference frame is that their unit vectors does not change with time so even the, uh, in that case if you are performing a differentiation of this unit vector it will give us zero now due to that force there will be some motion let's denote that the body is moving with a velocity v x x dot now uh, as per the principle of linear momentum the rate of change of momentum is force so f i cap is equal to d by dt here it will come as x dot m so uh, this is the momentum and we are simply differentiating the uh, momentum in order to find the rate of change of momentum now uh, if you perform the uh, simple uh, differentiation 
what we are going to get is mx double dot i cap. So if we are uh, from this equation, uh, what we can see is that if we are applying a force in a specific direction, the response will be also in the same direction. So here uh, we have uh, i cap on both sides, so we can directly write it as mx double dot. So this is also popularly known as Newton's law. Now in order to derive the energy which is uh, mainly based upon your conservation of uh, energy principle, what we will do is that, let us clear the slide. So we will define the work done that will be your energy stored by the system when it is subjected to any force. Integration fi dot dx i cap. So this will represent the displacement, infinitesimal displacement in x direction and this will be your force. Now as uh, we have previously de uh, derived that f is equal to mx double dot and here we will write i cap here dx i cap. Now as uh, per the law of uh, dot products i cap dot i cap will become 1. So the equation will simply become mx double dot dx. Now uh, if we go to the very basic kinematics law x dot that is velocity is equal to dx by dt and x double dot and that is acceleration is your instantaneous velocity rate of change of instantaneous velocity. Now if here we are going to substitute the dx then it will come as x dot dt and uh, if we further simplify this equation it will become mx double dot x uh, we can uh, again sum of this x double dot dt as x dot. So it, <coughs> it will become your uh, mx double dot mx dot dx dot. So, so what I will do is that I will write the equation here again. So it will it is this equation become mx dot dx dot. Now it is a simple integration. So that will give me half m x dot square. So this will be your uh, kinetic energy due to the translation motion that is equal to half m x dot square. Now again if we are going to look at this equation what we can see is that translation kinetic energy is your uh, directly uh, dependent upon mass of the system and a square of the velocity. Now uh, there are cases in, in most of the gen cases that we deal in our uh, engineering problems in those cases the mass is constant. But it is not the case that is going to happen always. So in some cases the mass is continuously changing like for example if you take an example of a rocket. So in that uh, uh, in the case of rocket due to the burning of fuel the mass will be continuously changing. So in that case we need to account for those uh, change in mass in the same equation. Now uh, let us move to the second part that is rotation. So for rotation what we have to do is that first uh, there will be some moment on this uh, body. Due to that moment by using the principle of angular momentum that will be equal to like uh, if there is some moment then this is j that is polar moment of inertia and it is theta double dot. This is your angular acceleration. Angular acceleration. Now, uh, now in order to find the kinetic energy of this rotating system. What we have to do is that we have to use conservation of angular momentum. So using that uh, principle what we are going to get is that half j theta dot square. Now in this case the j is polar moment of inertia that will be about your cg or even about any reference point that we are going to take it <coughs> while uh, solving the problem. So that is all about the, your uh, translation and the rotation kinetic energy. Now uh, the j value that is polar moment of inertia can also be computed about as we have previously discussed about any other uh, reference point. So let us take a very simple example like uh, how it works like for this case if we are going to look at this uh, simple animation what we can say is that by looking at this animation this whole system is hinged about this point. Now this uh, system is rotating about as this point O. What we have to do is that in order to define the kinetic energy what we can do is that we can take this polar moment of inertia about that point O and then theta dot square will be your angular acceleration. 
Now, in order to find the J naught, as this is a simple disk problem, so J naught will be equal to your J G. That will be your polar moment of inertia plus about your the C G plus mass into A square. So this comes from your parallel axis theorem. So if you are unsure about this, how it's uh, come, uh, how it's coming, what we will do is that we will also create a review of uh, basic uh, principle of uh, computing polar moment of inertia in next uh, video, in subsequent videos. If uh, you face any problems, then uh, please uh, type it in the comment window. So uh, now what we are going to do is that we will going to take very basic examples. Like for this case, if we have to compute this polar moment of inertia about this point O, let's for example take the radius of this disk as a R. And this point is approximately located as a R distance away from CG of this disk. So as uh, J naught is equal to JZ plus M A square. So for this case, Jz is simply half mr square plus m. What will be the value of a? That will simply become r. So this is 3 by 2 mr square. So this is a very basic problem. In the next example, we are also going to take another very basic example. So in this case, what we are first going to assume is that the mass is evenly distributed. So when the mass is evenly distributed, your Cg location will be at L by 2 distance. So this is your L by 2 and uh, the uh, L is the length of this rod. Now for this if you are going to compute a J naught about this point it will become J naught is equal to Jz plus Ma square. So Jz for this uh, thin rod is half ml square plus M into L by 2 whole square. So what will it, uh, it will become 1 by 3 m l square now i next we, example what we are going to this is the example that we are going to discuss in our next video because it is little bit complicated and uh, will make our video a little bit uh, more longer so for the, i will just give you a brief idea like for this case this mass the mass of this o dash A section is Me and mass of this uh, section is Mb. Now, when we are going to change, as this uh, whole system is like it, this block is going to slide along this direction when there will be some rotation. So, uh, for this case, what will happen is that if we are going to compute a J naught about this point, the distance of this CG of this rod and the CG of this rod will be continuously changing and at the same time. For the mass ms, the location of r will keep on changing with time. So for that case, what will happen is that your j0 will become a function of phi. So this is a, uh, 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 what we will do is that in next video, we will uh, derive the formula and uh, also go through the, uh, like uh, how we can come up with this equation of j0 that will be a function of alpha. So for this video, uh, that's all what uh, I have to discuss. So let's, uh, if you like the video, please support the channel uh, by subscribing it. And uh, if you like, uh, if you have any doubts or any, if you d d doesn't like any part of it, just type in the comment window so that we can do the further improvement. Thank you.